This yeah. episode, we discuss the apple. And the natural desire to meet an actual vampire. the flop house i'm dan mccoy and the second head of this comedy cerberus is me Stuart wellington and i'm elliot kalin once again the middle head on the comedy cerberus even though i'm announced third here's the problem it's like those movie posters (laughs) where the faces don't line up with the order of the names just look at the poster for jumanji the new one and you get the idea anyway i'm the middle head but i get named third Wait, am I here or am I not? Oh, am I ah, in ah, oh wait, yeah, I'm you're... not. Oh God, oh, Jesus. damn! No, you can. Oh, and be riding the you're... back, riding the back of this three-headed Cerberus hound is a you're like Pecosville of this Cerberus hound. <laughs> 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 I kind of see. I kind of see you as more of like the Persephone who is uh, who's like trapped here because she ate part of a pomegranate. Well, I want to talk about my favorite Greek myth of Pecosville. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Travis McElroy or whatever. Anyways, what do we do on this show? Yeah, oh, Dan, wow. what do we do on this show? Uh, we're getting but what do we do on the show? Ah, uh, Dan. Cutting right Dan. Dan. Oh, Dan. How, how, Dan. How are his levels? Dan. Yeah. Dan. What do we do on the show? <laughs> okay. Dan. We- Dan. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> what do we do on the show? Dan. Is this too much pressure? Dan. Dan. Dan, you were, <laughs> Dan, you were beta cucked by Travis <laughs> so fast. <laughs> Dan. What do we, we do on the show, Dan? We watch a bad movie, <laughs> uh huh, and then we talk about it. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And tonight we watched a movie that Travis inflicted upon us. Uh-huh. Hell yeah, Travis uh, McElroy. I Travis said it. McElroy. Okay. okay, sure. Hi, Stuart. We've just been friends for three years. Just, no, it's fine. Just clarifying for the audience. Okay. No, whatever. It's could okay. have been. You may know Travis from being more been, popular than us. Could have been. Yeah, that's Travis yeah. Tritt, country music star. No, it could not have been. <laughs> what are the Travis odds that you guys from, could pull the, from the Taxi Driver, played by Robert De Niro? Yeah, it could have been fictional yeah. character Travis. Do y'all, maybe he do y'all pull? Us a video you pull to watch. Robbie De Niro on your regular polls or whatever. Wait, are you trying to do a Robert De Niro impression? No. Because what I would, would that never. sound like, Dan? Um. <laughs> Dan, Dan, <laughs> come Dan. on, master impressionist Dan McCoy, you, give us your Bobby De Niro. <laughs> you, you talking to me? Oh my God! Oh, you, wait, is Robert De Niro over me? there? I'm Whoa. From California. Did you guys get Robert De Niro? We did. Oh. Robbie, tell us about. <laughs> that's what his friends call him, <laughs> Robbie. Robbie. I think. I think that. Uh, <laughs> I I share with Robert De Niro the uh, reticence that makes me also a bad interview subject. <laughs> <laughs> if there's two things I know, it's that Dan and Robert De Niro are both very quiet men. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna guess knee pain at his age. You also probably share. Uh, yeah, like you saw you saw the movie poster for what is it? Horny Grandpa? What uh-huh. fucking movie was he in? Yeah. Where, Off-putting grandpa. Like yeah, where he's, uh, <laughs> he's. it looks like he's putting Zac Efron in the fucking spinner Rooney. Like, his knees don't look like they're doing good. No, they're, those are Photoshop no. knees. Really? Yeah, oh, those yeah. are a younger man's knees. Yeah. Oh, wow. We should... Uh, they Photoshopped in Pan's knees. Hey, if you work in the, uh, if you work in the special effects uh, world, why don't you uh, write in and let me know if they're right or not? Just write into the, the flop house at... <laughs> If they're right or not, like two right so, knees, yeah. or no, if so it's, it, it, it's 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 Robert De Niro waist up, Zac Efron waist down. Oh, okay. oh yeah. wow, what a sexy so centaur! Like Rick Baker, if you're listening, send us the info. Are those also, Rick Baker, Baker. Baker, Rick Baker, do you uh, share a timeshare ponytail with Julian Sands? <laughs> <laughs> right in. Oh boy. Uh, anyway, no explanation. That's going to wrap it up, folks. Thank you so much yeah. for listening. Uh, Dan, uh, maybe you should remind people what we do on this podcast. I already did. We watched a bad What do we movie. do, no, Dan? But it's been a while. Dan. But it's been a while. Dan. About it. Dan. Uh, Dan, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Dan, I'm going to be aggressive and complimentary at the same time. <laughs> Dan, you're so fucking great. Dan. Those are the two things that Dan likes least. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's like the theory of like um of uh working out where you do muscle confusion yeah dan <laughs> that's a great joke dan oh damn boy. that was a good joke it's a it fucking like great joke dan game on you this is i'm negging game. dan <laughs> no you're pausing he's, me he's pro negging you yeah, yeah. Pause a negging you if only we had a word for that <laughs> Neglamenting? Is that anything? <laughs> um, Dan, what do we do? <laughs> we watch a bad movie and then we talk about it. You, you said that so well, Dan. Guys, guys, I'm not comfortable being in this position, but I'd like to steer us back on track for a moment. <laughs> okay. uh, so the, the movie we watched was a movie at Travis Picks, and that's The Apple from 1980, uh, which is a uh, it's a musical of a certain type. It's a movie, type. Travis, I think. That first drew you to this to this tale. <laughs> Well, this is, uh, so I first watched this movie the night of my little brother Griffin's bachelor party. Uh-huh. And Griffin, oh, it, wow, it was the times. night. Yeah, it was the night before <laughs> his wedding, and he was a little nervous. And my older brother said. <laughs> as, seen, oh, as seen in the Tim Burton film, The Nightmare Before Griffin's Wedding. <laughs> uh-huh. And Justin said, I know what will take your mind off of this. And I think Justin had come to it through riff tracks. Uh-huh. Um, and so we first watched the Riff Tracks version of the Apple. <laughs> and since then, I have probably watched the Apple 20 times. It is like my go to, oh, you think you like bad movies? Challenge yourself with this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because listen, the room, the room is bad, but I think the people making it didn't know it was bad. Birdemic is bad. Faithful Findings is, of course, bad. Uh huh. Uh, but I think the you're just Apple, now you're just listing classic bad movies. That's Troll what I'm saying. Two. But this is what makes uh, uh, this is what makes the Apple stand out for me is I guarantee not a single soul that worked on the Apple finished it and thought we did it. Yeah, like, we, we think, stuck the landing. I, yeah, they all knew. I think before it aired, except for the writer, mm-hmm. <laughs> which we can talk <laughs> about in a second. One of the creators of the movie. Did mm, gets a little dark here. Write a suicide note after I got booed a bunch and was going to kill himself took, until the he, other writer stopped he him. He took the the audience critique very. He harshly. took it to heart. Yes, he did. I now, mean, was he this put, Golan who was going to kill himself? I think so. Yeah. Oh boy. Yes. Yeah. He robbing he, us of so many oh. future uh, canon pictures. Yeah, it's, it was direct. It's it may be the only movie directed by Menachem Golan. No, Golan no, no. Works. I looked it up actually. He he directed he direct a bunch other of ones. Yeah, including Over the Top. Whoa. Oh, what? I didn't realize he directed Over the Top, so he had made amends for the Apple. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the choreographer, and now I don't have my foot in front of me, but the name of the choreographer is the same dude from So You Think You Can Dance, mm. the judge. Oh. I'm well, the pretty not, sure. Nigel we'll get into this, when we talk is about it, we'll get into that, what I think, it, I think the choreography is the saving grace of this movie in some ways. Oh, when we get to like the BIM hour? Yeah, yeah. When we get to, when we actually get get into the meat of this movie, what meat there is, which is strange because it's an apple, which is a fruit. That's not meat. I know it's fleshy. But here's the yeah. thing. I love. I legitimately, in the way that I think people feel about their favorite bet movie, love this movie. Like I get pumped watching it. Yeah, and you actually, I think you 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 managed a feat in that you picked a movie that I don't know if any of us had seen before. Elliot, did, have you ever seen this? Yeah, I've seen it once before. Okay, there's, so there's, I Dan retract I my statement. All right, so fuck to- off, Stuart. <laughs> but no, okay. Dan and I used to have a coworker who was, oh, I mean, Dan still does. I don't anymore because I don't work there anymore because it's full of losers now. But uh, mm-hmm. the, we used to have a coworker who loved this movie, and she kind of forced it on me. And the thing that always stuck with me is my favorite bad line from a song, which is uh, the line, like a baby watching magic, it's so gullible, it's tragic. Uh huh. <laughs> is playing on that that everyday experience we've all been through of being a baby <laughs> watching magic. Wait, that's better than it's a natural, natural, natural desire to meet an actual, actual, actual vampire. A thing that's that does not good. happen in the movie. <laughs> Except wait, he no the vampire. Shows and also, up for just yeah, a second. another thing that's not necessarily relatable. Like, oh, of course, yeah, everyone knows that common desire to meet an actual. You vampire. know, it's just like Spe- in. Wait, it's hold, just like hold, in Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> When uh, Tolkien describes Goldberry coming to the door as if an elf maiden had come to the door. And at this point, no elves had even shown up. (laughs) I have no point of context. 
Now, hold on a second. Travis, I don't know you as well as I know Dan Stewart. Dan Stewart, can you honestly tell me you do not want to meet an actual vampire? <laughs> I'm, one of, I'm one of those Dracula's going to suck my blood. Wait, hold on. No, I will say. like. It is a natural desire that if someone said to you right now, you could or could not meet an actual vampire, Uh do you really think you'd be like, nah? I mean, all right. No, be honest. Dan. No, let's say. Dan. 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 Look in a mirror. No, I'm going to. Unlike a vampire. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. And (laughs) tell yourself that you wouldn't want to meet a vampire. What if I I said there's a vampire behind that door and they want to meet you? Are you really going to say, hmm? I'm not interested. Oh, this is what I was going to say. If it's behind the door to my uh, apartment and I can... Did you let them in, Well, Dan? no, that's the other side of the door. Okay. So I can avoid inviting them in. Like, if I have that mystical barrier between uh-huh. me... A threshold, uh-huh. I would yes. definitely uh, meet an actual, actual, actual vampire. Okay, it's a, it's so... It's a mystical barrier called etiquette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vampires, very polite. So... Hey, Charlie Polite, throw some We have not even around, started on the movie. Count it, you'll get away. I mean, we talked about some of the music. So this is a musical, right? Yeah. Well, should okay. we yeah. talk about the plot, or should we talk about the elements? You can try. It is a musical. Yeah. You can okay. try to talk about the plot. This is a movie that when I introduce it to people, I often say, like, you at many points are going to feel lost in this movie. You're going to feel <laughs> like you have missed something. You have not. The movie just failed to tell you about this thing that's happening. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. As evidenced by where it starts. The if this movie is kind of like it's someone saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show and they were like, I can do that. <laughs> yes. But they couldn't do it. They just well, that's the thing. This movie I think was shot four years after Rocky Horror Picture Show came out. So I think it is very much trying to do that. Where they were like, what if it was like a campy? (laughs) Yeah. Where they're like, hey, regular picture show is great, but what if it was campy? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there's also like. Well, it's also, it's a, it's a campy musical made by people who seem to be very afraid of gay people. (laughs) Yeah. 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 There's there's a strong strain of homophobia running through it. It's like they saw Rocky Horror Picture Show and they're like, hmm. What if it was this, but it was about how evil gay people are? Okay, so uh, the year is 1994. We open in outer space. Uh Neither right now nor when this movie was made is it 1994. But the movie. How when you're making a movie like this? Why don't you just set it in like 3200? Why (laughs) you set it so near? Why not just like shoot for the stars? Mm -hmm. It's 3200. Yeah. Long time ago, galaxy far, far away. Yeah. TM. Swing for the fences. Anyways. I have to assume that uh, they were already working on that concept for the movie, what is it, Your Hunter from the Year 5000, whatever uh-huh. it's called. Mm-hmm. Pluto Nash. <laughs> yeah, they were like, let's save that idea for Pluto Nash. <laughs> <laughs> this, this Pluto Nash script has been kicking around Hollywood for 40 years now. I think it's finally time to make it. It's in the blacklist every year for some reason. Okay, so Elliot. <laughs> It's so, 1994. So in the movie, it's it's the far off future year of 1994, and we go right into the middle of the Song Vision World Competition, which is like the Eurovision Song Competition, but for the whole world. And right <laughs> off the bat, we're dropped into what looks like it's going to be the big winner, the uh, a song that I think is called. It's either called Bim or Bim is the Power. It's about the Bim's on the of way. Power called Bim. Yeah. Bim's on. Hey, hey, hey. Bim is on the way. Oh, Bim is the and way. Bim and Bim. Bim, Bim is the, Oh, I thought they were saying BIM's the only way. It's BIM no, is on no, the no. way. No, no, no. BIM is on the way. And BIM is Boogaloo International Music. Uh-huh. It's it's as if they were singing Sony's on the way. <laughs> but that, that isn't made because, clear until well, later bit- on. Like, at, at, when it's first introduced, I, I was just like, maybe they don't, like, maybe they just don't speak English. Like, they're not singing in English well enough for me to understand what they're saying. Because, I don't know, it feels like a very European production. Well, the way that it's staged and the costumes and the song make it seem like <coughs> Bim is an alien power <laughs> that is about to yes. land and conquer humanity. Which I'm all for. Yes. Buckle up. Let me see some Bim power. But it's well, actually about a music the, label. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they do a very poor job of ever saying, hey, movie, let's stop and explain what Bim is. Because it's a word you're going to be hearing a lot throughout the film. Mm-hmm. Bim is this thing. They just kind of drop you in, and I mean, it's better, I guess, than uh, 
Star Wars spending a couple minutes telling you about midichlorians or something, but they, they need a little bit more explanation of what this BIM is that everybody loves. Yeah. Well, the whole movie, so, it, there's a lot of like, so imagine if a music company was like a government. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. scene. Well, Go. It's, it's one of these many uh, dystopias that is music based. <laughs> like mm-hmm. in popular culture, there's a lot more popular music based dystopias than I think, you know, science would, you know, project as, as a possible reality. Well, it's also important to note that in this land, not only is it unclear the power of music has, time is also unclear in this thing. Because in this beginning, right, they they do this song, Bim's on the way. And uh-huh. then as he's getting interviewed, it's like, so the government has just picked this song to be the exercise song or whatever. And it's yeah, like, you gotta strike wait, all did the iron this song top. just debut? What's going on? <laughs> I mean, well, they, it's uh, it's this is this is the end of the long rollout, I guess, of the yeah. Bim song. They'd been yeah, they they'd been releasing song trailers with just a couple <laughs> little clips of it on yeah, YouTube. You, you could get uh, you could get a ringtone of them <laughs> for a while now, and people mm-hmm. are really horny mm-hmm. for them. <laughs> so so Bim is run by, as you mentioned, it's uh, it's Boogaloo's corporation. That's Mister Boogaloo. Who uh-huh. is your basic <laughs> if you're nasty. antichrist yeah. devil guy? Uh-huh. Yeah, he's he's played by an actor who was clearly uh, chosen for his singing ability. <laughs> I think he was chosen for his goatee. Yeah. So is he's he? Kind of- so he has a dog in the race. He is backing the two very sexy singers and their backup dancers singing the Bim song. Dandy and Dandy, Dandy, thank Dandy, you. who <laughs> becomes a villain in the movie. And he looks so much like he reminds me so much of the bad guy from Top Secret. <laughs> OK, see, I was going to say the dude Richard from Top Gear. <laughs> Maybe if the two of them had a baby, that uh-huh. was evil. Well, it's like they said, OK, so I think what we have is the dude, the lead singer of The Who, mm-hmm. whose name is escaping me. Mm-hmm. Roger Daltrey. Daltrey? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And Rich, Rich, Richie Who. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then. Uh, Cindy Lou Who. Al- Alfie seems modeled after uh, after George Michael. Okay, right. There's literally a based scene. on the chest hair. Well, there's one scene where he's in like bleached white jeans mm-hmm. and a white t shirt and like a gold necklace. Yep, and he straight up looks like he's off the cover of a Wham album. That's cool. But I, so let's explain who let's explain who let's define our terms here. So okay, the Bim song is about to win by Measure of Heartbeats. Uh, Boogaloo and his effeminate major domo are already celebrating when <laughs> this kind of folky rock duo to a man and a woman, Alfie and BB, they sing a love song and it really wins everyone over. And it looks like they're going to win until everything is sabotaged by the BIM guys. And let's just let's acknowledge the sabotage. Right. So it's already surpassed. It's not like they stop it just before. It has surpassed the heartbeats. The Bim song hit 150. Mm -hmm. They hit like 152. And then they put on this weird beepy tape (laughs) and everyone's Uh like, yeah, this seems. It makes them mad. I love them all. I also love how uh, the guy who's sabotaging it hands over the tape in broad daylight, like in a room full of people. And he says, don't let anyone see you using this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, yeah, as soon as the beeping starts, like the audience who were loving it a moment before immediately start jeering and like rushing the stage. Yeah. But I think like, wouldn't that make their hearts beat faster? Well, yes. But not only that, yeah, it, you seems think like, so. it seems like Boogaloo's in control. Why don't I just be like, nah, wasn't successful. <laughs> and then we're like, okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's the only one who has access to that heartbeat monitor. Just slip some BIM dollars to the heartbeat monitor guy and just be like, they got less. Okay. Cool. The end. (laughs) The end. Or just say, like, okay, Uh, cool. People like them, I'm going to sign them now. Yeah, which is what he tries to do. He's like, okay, there's this power, this like music power that I don't have control over. I have to, you know, suck it into my vortex, into my orbit. Mm hmm. And so his the the group that he is fronting, Bim is the way or whatever. They're they they represent Tandy like, and Dandy. Yeah, Thank Tandy you. and Dandy represent like a very modern, slick pop music sheen. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, Alfie and Bibi are kind of like uh, 
Kind of like a folksy. They're like the carpenters. Okay, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, this this is where this is where I want to uh, I want it. This is more uh, coding for me of kind of ant. Uh, the Alfie and BB are very much like. It feels like even more than carpenters, they're like Heartland, straight white America. Whereas the BIM guys are disco, and disco is the music of women uh-huh. of people of color and of queer people, and it's very much like. The, 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 the BIM presentation is this big, futuristic, campy disco thing. And then you've got these, like, just these, like, straight-from-the-heart American folk songsters. And the fact that their song is maybe one billionth as catchy as the BIM song, which I find genuinely catchy, maybe just because they repeat <laughs> the same phrase over and over again. Yeah. Hey, hey, just hey, like, hey. BIM's on the way. It sets the stage. BIM's but on the way. But can I say— like, I was like, I oh, finally— I do want to say, because this is a movie I've watched a ton of times and now I have a platform, um, the first line (laughs) of the BIM song, they say, there is no, uh, what is it? There is no happy or there is no sad. Uh Uh-huh. But they don't rhyme. There is no, uh, like, there is no good. Oh, no, there's no rhymes. Yeah. They say there is no good, there's no, there bad. Is no bad, there is no happy, and everything's not okay, or whatever. But they don't say there is no bad. And it will always, it's like literally the first, the Wait, first thing they Wait, you're saying they, they don't say, rhyme bad with sad is yes, what you're hoping for? Okay. A thing that a four-year-old would do. <laughs> they say like there Look, is no jazz, good, man. there is no bad, <laughs> like there your, is no happy, there is jazz. no pain. You set up the expectation and you just knock it down. I like to it, imagine they had like Stephen Sondheim doing the lyrics, and he's like, "I can't crack it. There's no, there's no rhyme here." What is it? Let me, damn let me it! Op- let me open up my rhyming dictionary at at bad, and it's just a blank page. Oh boy! A, a young Lin Manuel Miranda a was just beating the down the door, like, "Let me in! I've got it." I'm cracked it. There is no rad. <laughs> Anyways, so they I sing do a love song. That, uh, the Bim song, the, the Bib song is all these like nihilistic slogans, and it's like they're just hurling the anti life equation at the audience. There's something very <laughs> yeah. uh, Jack Kirby's Fourth World about it that I like. Yep. But then, okay, after the after the song convention, Bim has been named the winner. Bim for the win. There's a big party, and they all get in their Ghostbusters Ecto ones, and they head off to the party. Yeah, the design on those uh, and, those limousines is very much like Ect- Ecto One, basically. Yes, yeah, they all look like they're driving away in Ghostbusters ambulances. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they go to this party and they go, "Look at all this BIM merchandise. We have our BIM glasses, and they hand out the most <laughs> unwieldy drinking glasses I think I've ever seen. <laughs> they're vases. Yeah, they are vases. Don't yeah, they yeah. like a wear vases? You're holding a vase. Don't they drink a BIM and tonic out of it? They're having a BIM and tonic in a vase. <laughs> But Guys, I could go for a vase full of Bim like, and tonic right now. <laughs> Bim is becoming like, like what? Bim like. is the Apple version of of the word Smurf, where it just means yeah. anything. <laughs> is this when the fellow starts giving out? Well, when they're like, "We got to start, we got to start talking about Bim merchandising." He's like, "How about a T-shirt?" Like, "No shit, dude!" Yeah. <laughs> I love that he says T-shirt and everyone shits on it so hard. Like T-shirt, get the fuck out, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> and then he uh, they gives out the BIM stickers, and they're loving that shit. Well, that's the thing. The T-shirt stickers. is not it, but BIM stickers. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. And this is I one of those this. moments where uh, the apple starts bringing in uh, its biblical roots, because uh-huh. much as when the Antichrist comes, all followers of the Antichrist <laughs> will bear his mark, the BIM sticker, it becomes more and more uh, enforced that you have to wear it, because that's Ooh. the mark of Mr. Boogaloo, the Antichrist. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, Elliot. Yeah. Are you saying yes. that the apple uh-huh. might have biblical allegories? <laughs> Look, yeah, they, just, just bear the with biblical allegories. Maybe, alle- maybe you'll they, see, maybe, maybe you'll see Elton John God descend in a magic limousine. Yeah, and guys. not only that, here's the thing. You might think, oh, does the apple have an biblical <laughs> allegory? No, 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 my friends. <laughs> the apple has about seven biblical yeah. allegories. The biblical allegory in this is only slightly less subtle than in Mother. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't, I don't get it. I haven't seen Mother yet. Oh, boy. Don't spoil it for Stuart. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, so, Have you seen Arrested uh, Development? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get it. 
I I also haven't seen Mother. Uh, so we uh, we so flash Alfie forward and, to so a part Alfie of the movie Bibi, I don't remember. So so Alfie and BB are they're at the party and BB is seduced by the male singer of the of the BIM group. Now is the male one Tandy or Dandy? Dandy. I think that's Dandy. Oh. Yes, Dandy. And, uh, and and he seduces her to kiss him while everybody looks up through a skylight and laughs at them. So sexy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's just like it's like you remember uh, the smooth moves of the of uh, the the fake boyfriend in Carrie who takes mm-hmm. Carrie to the prom. That's mm-hmm. what this is all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a. But it wins now. BB wants to sign wants to sign with Mr. Boogaloo as their agent, but Alfie is like, no way. And when they go to the signing ceremony, uh, after they after the song. Uh, Everything is was it? Everything is entertainment in 1994. Oh, something like that. Nothing is like show business, which is the weirdest dystopian. Oh, that's what it is. Because it's 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 like hey, I'm at, like it makes sense because there's this group of show business people here, and they break into song, and it's like yeah, but they don't. Yeah, but but also they don't. This is nothing. <laughs> is that the uh, is that the dance number that happens in that uh, airport? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> The yes. waiting room. The airport, the airport the one where the uh, that, where Mr. Boogaloo has his office. The one where they surprise the choreographer on the day of, and they're like, "You gotta choreograph somebody." Yeah, you <laughs> strut this direction. <laughs> you strut the other direction. There, this it's is, done. What we are hitting on now, just to touch on it, is the most amazing thing about the apple to me, which is in these numbers there are easily. 60 extras like yeah, yeah this is huge. not they're normal this is not the room where there's like four people in every scene this is like this the the budget for this movie was five million dollars wow yeah because this like this looks like a big production i mean like it, it's it's cheap in in certain ways but it has like lighting big crazy sets people, costume, and it has the, like the, costumes and like yes. a cast of thousands sort of thing and design like Every every set is has some element of design to it. Yeah, and even and so. every dancer has a crazy costume. Like they yeah, are, yeah. they're even. I don't know, dude. They're in they're Germany. In like they're crazy this was shot. Uniforms. This was shot in Berlin, Germany. I'm sure you can just go to any store and buy one of those outfits. <laughs> well, that's what Germ- at this point in yeah. 1979, what West Germany was known for was its whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this was, I mean, the thing is, Germany really took the Germany really took its cue style wise from the Apple. It w- it was in Germany what like uh, Annie Hall was for a generation of women in America. <laughs> they all started wearing ties, mm-hmm. and that you would talk about how oh that person has the Apple look. That's why they have bands of silver fiberglass all over their <laughs> arms. Yeah, that's why that fellow's beard is covered in glitter, and he's wearing a leather <laughs> leather jumpsuit with the pointiest shoulders. Oh, that's that's why that guy is dressed like Mork from Orc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, at, the, so, uh, at uh, roughly BB? this point, this oh, is where BB BB is going to sign the contract, and Alfie starts having. Yes. The, they're in the office, and they're being pushed to sign the contract, and Alfie starts having these like hallucinations of this situation as like a biblical like devil situation well which, but hold on well there's, there's he, a false start earthquakes and storms <laughs> yeah there's a false start where he has that vision and then everybody looks at him like oh what was that and yeah. then, <laughs> they all make fun of him and he's like what did i say something about t-shirts <laughs> Uh, and they and then, then he dream, he dreams that they're adam and eve in hell being tempted by a magic apple and Which is not how that fire. scene went down, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> yeah, quite the opposite. They were in a very, very nice place at the they time. They didn't take them to hell and like, what about this apple, though? Yeah. <laughs> I think that kind of tips off the bad the, the bad consequences of eating the apple if you take them down to hell for and that. And there's a vampire yeah. there. <laughs> a tasty apple, magic apple, juju even, apple. Even the, juju the, the apple. lyrics that, that Dandy is singing make it sound like it would be terrible to eat the apple. He's like... In, it's like mystify you, de- uh, destroyify you, enslaveify you, that kind of stuff. It's all about how bad it's going to be. <laughs> and here's the thing. What's amazing about this is, and, and honestly, like I said, I've watched this movie 20 times. I think Alfie might have The Shining, right? <laughs> sure. Like, okay. He sees it. <laughs> like, he sees this all going down, right? And. BB is just like, okay, whatever. Like, BB is not, so this is not happening real time. 
right? Or no, because, I'm assuming it's a vision. Well, yes, it's, it's, it's tough to say because the costuming decision was basically like, "Hey, I already, hey, costume designer, I already had you create a terrifying uh, world for this to take place in." Now I need you to take it a couple steps up. <laughs> well, what's great about this and what makes it so genius in its uh, storytelling is BB, before this number about being tempted takes place, has already signed. Yeah. So this is not about yeah. yes. Alfie trying to protect BB's soul. That's done. Mm -hmm. This is just about ramifications <laughs> of the thing she has already done. Yeah. It might as well just be BB uh, Alfie going, oh, no, really? Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I mean, it's a great to, movie. To be honest, so, that giant apple looks pretty good, right? No, like, no, I, it doesn't take at all. It looks like it's, it's green. carved out of wood. Oh, the green although, apples are the best, right? Let me what? give credit where credit is due. The one person who has, like, the double face makeup, amazing. Yeah. Sure. Amazing. That looks great. I thought that I I think they got an actual deformed person to play that part. That's how good the makeup was. But the, the, and also the the, the the apple is being presented by Dandy, who is wearing almost no clothes. But it's not like he's the <laughs> most beautiful man in the world. He's just kind of like an average looking guy. But now he's next to naked, and you're like, this I think kind of awkward. For I think everybody. I think first off, I think you you're you sound insane right there. He's amazing looking. And the best part about it is you see him in this <laughs> tiny little outfit and this tiny little pair of shorts. But it isn't until about halfway through the song that you're, all your fears are confirmed. And when he turns around, you're like, that is a whole butt. <laughs> that is not covering up his butt in the least. So, the Apple is an amazing movie. It's a little Go something on. for the ladies. <laughs> yeah, okay. or the, so or the, the gentlemen. Apple, uh, at this point, Alfie storms out. Uh, he refuses to sign, and BB is trained to be a rock star uh, Boogaloo style. Boogaloo sings a song about how it's great to be a dominating master. And then <laughs> yeah. Boogaloo is in, Boogaloo in maybe the most, I, I will say the most upsetting song <laughs> of perhaps the whole movie where the two people of color in the movie do sing about how great it is to have a master. I will say yeah. this yeah, movie that I, I have said that I enjoy this movie it is bad. In that way, I will say that is not Oh, wow. You'll, you'll give up some ground over here, guys. No, I will say, listen, sometimes movies are bad in various ways. Sometimes it's the writing. Yeah. Sometimes it's the costumes. And sometimes it is the incredibly problematic themes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's saved because at this point, BB essentially becomes Dazzler from yep. the X-Men. Mm -hmm. uh, she's just like kind of a disco metal pop singer and she sings this song that is a very confusing metaphor about america as a kind of drug or maybe america's uh -huh. the drug addict and honestly yep. it feels like a song meatloaf might have sang and i genuinely like it a lot oh it's this is so good it's the I best song enjoy it is yeah. the best song my the best thing about it and i think it is a super creative incredibly interesting choice is the half hitch that it is like when she says speed, it always comes a little sooner <laughs> than it musically should. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I love how all of her backup goes, dancers. Speed! It's like she's bellowing it at you. Oh, it's so good. I feel like all the homophobic former Judas Priest fans just needed to see this sequence to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Those Backup dancers are dressed exactly like Rob Halford. <laughs> um, but which is awesome. I mean, they got the moves. They got the goods. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. That's all stuff I like about it. This is the one song where I was like, mm, maybe I'll buy the Apple soundtrack and I'll just put this one song on my iPod. And I'll <laughs> it is. The, I, honestly, this song and I'm Coming are, yeah. are the two, in my opinion, Best songs. In this I'm a child movie. of love fan, but we'll get to that later. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So now uh, so, we cut then, to Alfie, well, who wakes up in a soundstage. <laughs> well, before uh, that, before that, uh, BB BB is so successful that now uh, everyone has to wear a BIM sticker, and we see Alfie's Jewish landlady get a ticket from a police officer who looks like one of the space balls. For not wearing a BIM sticker, mm -hmm. and that and, and that landlady, it's like Alfie. It's like Alfie is renting a room in a Clifford Odets play. It's like this <laughs> rundown stage set of a crappy apartment, and his landlady's like, 
No, so you want to cause trouble? Eh, fair. <laughs> it nice does boy, look like they're about to crazy. cut over a stage left to where his therapist's <laughs> office is. Yeah. <laughs> and there's... <laughs> And when she's when she's asking him for the rent, his his only response is to sneak up behind her, grab her breasts, and then start playing a song on his guitar for her. Now, classic Stuart. Dan move, yeah, am I right? Scam. What? <laughs> now, Stuart, please share with us the observation that you made and how it evolved into your understanding of this person. I I mean, obviously, as soon as this character is introduced, I'm like, this is the nurse from Romeo and Juliet, and in fact, she did play the the nurse in Romeo plus Juliet. And as Professor Sprout in uh, the Hogwarts movies starring Harry Potter. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the Hogwarts movies. <laughs> the Hogwarts movies. Parentheses. <laughs> feet with Harry Potter. So somebody somebody made it big out of this movie is what I'm saying, guys. I, I will say, when I watched this movie and I was like, oh, there's no names in this. Uh, except for Professor Sprout yeah, yeah, yeah. from the Hogwarts movies. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. When, when I look at the, the ruins and devastation of this movie and I'm like... Wow, this earth is barren and salted. No life will grow. No? Nay? <laughs> What's that sprout of green in the corner? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She it's is, this she actress is whose name Chloe I don't remember. The wreckage of the apple. Yeah. Uh, so Alfie sings another song. This is about, uh, what, how BB has left him for evil. I think, frankly, mm-hmm. yeah, another one of the better songs in the movie. Uh, but it does, it does have the wonderful reaction. Song. It has the wonderful reaction that happens. That happens a couple times in this movie where people are like, love songs are out, which has never been a thing (laughs) in all of human history ever. (laughs) Oh, love me. Was that the one one subject there will always be songs about? Was there like a reactionary movement in like the late 70s where they're like, modern music isn't about love enough? Never. To answer that question, Stuart, never. People were like, love, that's $100 million right there. <laughs> we don't like songs that use the word baby anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. And uh, my so favorite part Alfie, about that scene. Alfie's song is. When they say no to Alfie, they do say. Take a listen to what's on the radio and just write that. Where I'm like, he wrote a fucking love song. I don't know what else he wanted. <laughs> like, what are you hoping for, dude? Yeah, he's trying to sell his song to now, this uh, alternate, uh, you know, song like publishing thing, I guess. But I'm like, who in this world that is controlled by Bim? Like, how is there any other alternate? music venues that he could go to? Well, do you think they just leave a couple of comp- competing, uh, like music? In, like music businesses out there to like music labels to like just so they feel keep alive. Them fresh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they can like squash them under their boot anytime they want, but they don't. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not it's not the killing; it's the knowing that you can kill. Exactly. So what happens next, Elliot? So next, uh, so Alfie's song is rejected, and then he gets a ticket for not having a BIM sticker. Uh oh! Time for the BIM hour, Movie, guys. Real you quick, gotta stop in your tracks. How does it? How does the cop not not uh? Why doesn't he just tell the cop that the BIM sticker's up his butt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, the cop does say expressly that you can wear the sticker anywhere you want. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think r- letter of the law, you could trick a cop. Unless, so, theoretically, they might check, in which case, then you'd be busted. However... Uh, well, then you just fart in their face <laughs> and run away giggling. <laughs> Travis what, has a your good point. your pants around your ankles? <laughs> yeah! Listen, they just had a fart in their face. Yeah. They're not up for a chase. Yeah, don't, t- don't tell me you haven't done that, Elliot. <laughs> I forgot the famous saying, fart in the face, not up for a chase. <laughs> yes, thank you. Now, here's my favorite thing it's about right this movie. right there with the Red Sky at Dawn, Sailor Take... <laughs> Uh, Dawn. <laughs> Sailor okay. take pawn 12. Yeah. <laughs> that classic chess move. You can't beat it. Now, here's the thing I love yeah, about this movie. Yeah, red light at dawn, Sailor take pawn. What, okay, here's what the thing love I love about this movie. When Bim Hour comes, everyone is taken by surprise. <laughs> like, they scheduled a surgery to happen during Bim Hour. During Bim Hour? Schedule around that now, shit. Now, do we make clear what BIM hour is? It's the state mandated no, we haven't. exercise uh, break in the middle of the day where everyone. We uh, do fit- fitness exercises to the BIM song. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's but, basically just everyone dances. It, it, but it's 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 like a put on for everyone. Like, ugh, 
Bam Hour, as though this is not happening. This is where time becomes a real sticky wicket. Because, like, <laughs> maybe Bam Hour has been going on for, I don't know, eight years. Maybe this is the first time Bam Hour has happened. It is unclear. But everyone is, is like, say- surprised by it. Everyone, yeah, everyone's taken by surprise. Some are pretty happy about it, but uh, like the like the firefighters who well, are the like firefighters get a nice break from firefighting. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's my one. That's the one joke in the movie that I like is that Bim Hour comes and they stop fighting the fire and exercise in front of a burning building. I'm like the apple. I'll give it to you. That's a pretty good joke. I really wish they'd cut to like people inside the building who were like crying out for help and instead they start dancing as well. Well, we have a similar joke where the person on the slab being operated upon tries to dance and then has a heart attack and dies. Well, another you solid goose. Assume goof. he dies. Well, yes. We are Show me the grave. The cues. Show it to me. <laughs> it's the yes, exact I would that say scene is dead. the that scene is the mirror opposite of the scene in Break Into Electric Boogaloo where they dance so hard that someone gets brought back to life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they actually film those back to back. <laughs> they only have the yeah. set for the one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I just mean, reverse the film uh, from this movie. <laughs> it did make me think that Golan Globus uh Golden really have Globes. a thing have a thing for the word boogaloo. This between this and break in two. Yeah. They're big boogaloo Ooh, it's fans. It's a great word. Yeah, oh, it's a great yeah, word. It, it was name it was like word. how it was like how com- there was that time where every comedy was like a character needs to be named Chuck. That's really funny, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it rhymes with fuck. <laughs> no, but it rhymes with what? Any funnier than that? Boogaloo. It rhymes with what, Dan? Fuck Travis. It, or it rhymes with what? <laughs> I'm sorry, Travis. Say it with confidence, Dan. 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 Say it, Dan. <laughs> Say it, Dan. Travis is bringing a real interesting <laughs> energy to this one. <laughs> Say it, Dan. I didn't think we were going to have a bull, more of a bully than Everyone. Hodgman on the show. <laughs> Say it, Dan. Fuck. Say, yeah. Yeah, Dan. Yeah, like part of Travis we play that Dan's my- older brother, Chet. <laughs> say it into my phone while I record my new ringtone. <laughs> say it, Dan. Okay. Say it for Stuart. Dan. I think I feel like I feel like this episode should just be titled Dan. Dan. Um, okay. Dan. So uh, the so let's see. So after BIM so after hour the BIM done. workout, the BIM workout goes forever. Uh, BB's the an hour the song. She's oh, sensibly popular. an hour. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, the BIM yeah, workout goes, goes an exactly that, an hour. That hour somehow, it's almost like it's in real time. Like we experience that full hour during the movie. Uh, but nobody cares about Dandy and Tandy anymore, and they're pretty a- unhappy about it. And Alfie tries to go save BB, but he's beaten up by a bunch of thugs with fangs. That's right. We got a couple of bright works <laughs> working for Boogaloo. One of them is literally named Bulldog. In the most, like, spot, it, it is though they said... What should we name this character? And they said, "Well, what does he look like?" <laughs> yeah, they these thugs. It feels very much like they're Gamorians. Elliot, thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I would agree completely. The, if I would say that maybe George Lucas stole the design for the or the idea for the Gamorian guards <laughs> from these characters, it's possible. Yeah, the- those yeah, those characters' uh, masks are just life casts of these two gentlemen. There, there is a scene where they're wearing <laughs> what looks like uh, uh, looks like a uh, paperclip, but like a paperclip harness that is uh-huh. exactly like a Grimorian. Like it is literally like the same harness. Yeah, like if I was a kid and I wanted to be the Gamorrean guard when I'm playing Star Wars with my friends, and they're all like, "Why the fuck do you want to be a Gamorrean?" I'm like. Oh, but it's cool, right? And I take my shirt off and try and make a harness. Yeah. I'd make it out of paper clips. That's exactly <laughs> it, how I would it look. It kind of looks like the Gamorrean guard outfit that they would sell. Like, it's not name brand Gamorrean guard, but you could buy it at like the costume store. <laughs> yeah, that green, was just green like, paper yeah, yeah. guard. <laughs> when you're buying a costume to be a Gamorgan guard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's just called Angry Pig Man. <laughs> <laughs> Rancor Handler. It's called. <laughs> 
I mean, they're more like Rancor food, to be honest. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Rancor buddies. (laughs) Little little Rancor buddies. I love that show, Rancor Buddies. Oh, it's so good. It's it's right up there with Rancor Babies, as far as I'm concerned. It's like Tom Hanks and Tom Hanks and Peter Scurlary pretend to be Rancors to get into the Rancor uh, sorority. Mm -hmm. So sexy. That hotel, that that house, that only sorority. Do you know what Bosom Buddies is about, Dan? I don't know. What is it about? <laughs> they are, they are. It is not a sorority. They are grown men. The uh-huh. apartment building they live in is demolished, and there are no other apartment buildings in the entire city of, I think, Chicago. And so uh, okay. they have to pretend to be women to live in a women's only apartment building. Wait, sorority. hold on. It's not a sorority. Come on. I also <laughs> thought it was a sorority, Dan. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, you guys were thinking of the hit film Sorority Boys. Starring, I, uh, what's his name? That comedian who was in every movie for a little bit. No, you uh, are wrong. I was actually thinking of the Jason. Oh, no, no, no. Who's the dude? From, Jason Voorhees? No, the dude from The Single Guy. <laughs> Silverman? Jason Sudeikis? Jonathan no, Silverman? Jonathan Silverman. Uh-huh. Jonathan he did Silverman. a movie called Sorority Brother? No, Sorority. Uh, no, you're that's thinking, what I was thinking. You're thinking of Soul Man. And it's <laughs> no, about, I was nope. not. See and Thomas I never Howell. Will be <laughs> See Thomas Howell do what? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wazanski. Uh, I imagine that <laughs> Stuart has been waiting for years for someone to mention <laughs> oh See Thomas Howell. <laughs> oh, my, my curse is lifted. <laughs> How did you not say See Thomas Howell? Which was his uh, college radio name. <laughs> I'm I'm calling on all the Flophouse listeners, someone with Photoshop skills, to make a children's primer that says "C. Thomas Howell, C. Thomas Run," and that kind of thing. <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> okay, you got me. You got me with that one. That was a good one. Um, so. <laughs> What's going on in this movie? Oh we're shit! Yeah. About? Meanwhile, okay. in the movie. Uh-huh. Meanwhile, in the movie. Back to the uh, movie. Cut uh, to the movie. <laughs> Smash cut. <laughs> now cut to the movie. Now uh, BB has a, a sings a song. This is kind of the somewhere out there of the movie where BB and Alfie both sing a duet from different places. Oh together. yeah, that's oh when with we the Vegas our... rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's when we did a big hug here yeah. at uh, Flophouse Manor. Yeah, it's true. When when Alfie a lot was more singing s- in the rain. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot more snuggling involved in this uh, watching. The, there was a lot of snuggling. It took a lot of coaxing to get Dan into that snuggle. <laughs> and he was in the middle too, so you can imagine how that went. Yeah. Yeah, we're not oh, a so we're not a small sorry, headed it. trio over <laughs> here. No, you were there, Elliot. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, we got a, we printed out <laughs> a picture scared. of you and we we snuggled that. Meanwhile, back. uh Alfie's landlady nurses him back to health with chicken soup because she's Jewish. And Alfie goes to, this is when he goes to the big drag party at Mr. Boogaloo's to try to free BB, but he gets drunk and he's confused by what he's seeing, all these, all these men who don't look quite like men, and gets seduced by Tandy, and who sings uh-huh. uh, the, the Coming For You song. Which is, I, in my opinion, the best song in the movie. Yeah. These well... are the most explicit lyrics I think of any song it may be ever written. Yeah, no, 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 no. This, it, I, I'll steal a joke from Buffy here. They call it a single entendre. Mm-hmm. It is the most direct, like, sex. It, it is though they said, well, we want to write a sex song. But what if people don't get it? Don't worry. <laughs> They're going to get it. We've got it. Don't worry. The lyrics are like, "I'll get you when you, when you think you can't, uh, you don't have any more. You're like, then I'll go deeper and tighter and wetter. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. <laughs> let's let's run these lyrics by the boys over at ZZ Top who brought us Pearl Necklace and Tube Snake Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> the first line might as well have been, put your penis inside me. Wait, what's this song about? <laughs> I'm really glad that we now uh, have uh, Travis singing that on tape. I just love this song so much. This and Speed, I think, are the two best songs ever by humans. The, oh, yeah. So this is where he, yeah, this is where he goes on his. That are better, but this is it. where he goes on his like literal descent. This is uh, Alfie's like lowest point, where he has like a descent well, into hell. His like vision blurs. He is surrounded yeah. by like leering faces. But he never undresses in this whole sequence. <laughs> there is one point that I still love because of the imagery of it. I'm trying so hard to understand. 
where uh, Tandy is laid on her back with her head hung over Mm -hmm. the bed and she's singing and she seems to be climaxing. And then she and Alfie both set up. So they've both been laying on their backs. Mm -hmm. And it makes it unclear to me how they might have been engaging in any kind of coitus. <laughs> yeah, like, what is this, some kind of Alan Moore comic book? What's going on? It, it seems as though they were both just <laughs> staring at the ceiling where they have stuck glow-in-the-dark <laughs> stars to yeah. somehow imitate constellations. I love I loved during that sex song where it has those shots of, it looks like a constellation, to use your word again, because yes. you said it and I can't not say it now, uh, of beds where... Almost naked men are writhing around with women in pretty covering teddies. Nighties, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, simulating sex, kind of, like ba- basically performing the moves that, say, somebody who's never had sex before would be like, yeah, this is probably how it works. It, it more seems like they're simulating <laughs> Greco Roman wrestling. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it looks, yeah, it, well, it looks kind of like. I don't know, paintings of sex that you'd see on, on the outside of an urn. Yeah. Yes, it does seem like they've just cut to Xanadu. Yeah. Yes, what is going It looks on like what movie. happens if you hit the right button combinations for King in the Tekken video games <laughs> and he starts performing some kind of complicated throw. <laughs> it's a great movie now, is uh, what you, we're you saying. Guys, that, that, that reminds me of my favorite moment from that sequence, which is when uh, Tandy is wearing like a dress and she takes it off to reveal a kind of jumpsuit that is so much <laughs> less sexy than the dress she was wearing she, over it. She is wearing a pink singlet underneath the <laughs> dress. Once again, as though she is ready to wrestle I'm like, Alfie. Is she, like, does she sleep in that? What's going on with that thing? <laughs> What's her deal? Is she made out of silly putty? What's going on? Uh, yeah, so she is so clay face. Uh, <laughs> so, so at this so point, he's he has so they, seduced they have, her, right? They have. He has like sex she with her, seduced, and she, much as she, in the film, much much as in the Steven Soderbergh film Traffic, Rock Bottom is is uh, illustrated by someone having sex with a black person, which is again a plot <laughs> point I'm not crazy about. Well, yeah. and also you get uh, the added the added shittiness of like he has just slept with another woman, and then he walks into a room to find BB clearly drugged up having sex with another man, and his reaction is so judgmental. As though he has not also <laughs> yeah. just been drugged up having sex with another person. Like, how do you not in that moment be like, yes, I'm here too. I'm getting you out of here. And I, the thing that I find the most traumatic about this situation, the thing that I just don't understand and almost made me throw up when I try to contemplate the mysteries of it, is he walks into this room... Nothing up to this point would indicate that these people wouldn't just want to have a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, that's the thing. It's like he 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 looks at her having sex with with her with him as though this is the first kind of thing. Like he hasn't braced himself for yes, in this sexual romp I've been engaged in in the last six minutes. Mm-hmm. There, she might maybe be having sex. Like he has not braced himself <laughs> for this particular moment in any way. Like he was going to walk in and they were playing backgammon. Like uh-huh. I don't know what he thought was going on, but he yeah. was like, whoa, oh, and then he just leaves. It's like, I thought they were just singing partners. <laughs> That's my oh, alpha. No, That's my I did see you impression. guys making out, but 45 minutes ago. Yeah. So, yeah, he pieces out. Uh, he leaves. This terrifying uh, situation has cleansed him, and he he leaves and then wakes up in a park full of refugee hippies. They're just and, kind of like yeah, leftover and hippies. Yeah, this, uh, this guy who's clearly wearing heavy uh, stage makeup wakes him up, this... Uh, this elderly man well, with, and like, we also get, a putty we get the nose. the wonderful jump of, like, oh, she's having sex with Tandy or whatever. And Dandy. then he's on a bench, and he's like, and they were like, you were calling out her name in a dream. And he's like, no, I wasn't dreaming. It's like, <laughs> okay, we were just watching the scene. Are you trying to convince us that that was a dream and maybe he didn't sleep? What's going on? What is this? Like, <laughs> 
Yeah, the the stage makeup on this Gandalf fellow looks like what would happen if uh, Gandalf was one of the vampires on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Why do you keep saying Gandalf as though he wasn't Tom Bombadil? What oh, well, he was oh, Tom see, Bombadil. Oh, he is carrying a dagger like Tom Bombadil would. So I assumed he was the old man with all the cats from Logan's Run, but I, Tom Bombadil was a better. <laughs> he was actually yeah. old man Logan. Um, strangely, that's why the claws came out of his he's hands also, in that one. And he's the head of this hip be like enclave and they're supposed to be these peaceful wonderful people but he always has a huge knife strapped to his waist well and what's great then is he's hanging out with uh with alfie and then the cops show up and they're all like okay bye and they leave their fires burning in the middle of this park it's clearly a park there are no woods (laughs) there are no woods and they're just like find us under the bridge and it's like Alfie, just go. <laughs> just what? go with them. Just go with like, Alfie. You see everyone, literally everyone else is running away from the police and you just sit there. <laughs> and then the cops literally say like, hey, get out of here. <laughs> so I was like, there is, it's not like he gets arrested and when he frees himself, he has to go find them. The cops are just like, hey, go. <laughs> okay, do you, did you Scat. hear what they said about the bridge? Go there. <laughs> Shoot. You go to the bridge. Go on, it's, get. <laughs> get along. But this is also, this is, so let's for a second let's take a moment and just look at what the hero of the movie has done throughout the film. He grabbed his landlady's boobs as a joke, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, which is enough to get you kicked out of the Senate. He uh, <laughs> he slept with a woman and then just left and was like, "I hate you, you suck." And then he's just sitting there while campfires are burning around him, abandoned fires in a public park, and he's just like, "I'll just let this burn. I don't care." He's a bad dude. I don't like him. <laughs> well, not only that, but he reacts to the police showing up to this as though he has not had a run in with the cops up to this point. As though the cops showing up was okay. The way that the hippies react. It's good for him. But what, the way the hippies react is like a ghost hunter and they are ghosts and they're like, oh, we'll ban it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, what's going on? And it's like, it's the police. You and know that, what this, you know what You know what's going to happen. They're going to come and ask you where your bin mark is and you're going to say, up my butt. And they're going to look at it right and you're going to fart you in their face your and you're going to run away. You fart on their face. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works, Same buddy. Well, same old. It's inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> So then they're like, hey, uh, so, uh, find me at the bridge. And the cops are like, hey, go to the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, BB uh, decides that she wants to leave. And uh, Tandy, the female singer, helps her escape because sex with Alfie has changed her and made her a good person again. And mm-hmm. uh, she, Al- BB is like, come with me. And she goes, no, it's too late for me. And they sing a duet about how their heart has changed and BB has finally found her. And there's- I, I, I do want to acknowledge that moment because it is. In all of this movie, maybe the least explained moment of the entire movie, where Tandy is in the elevator with her and says, <laughs> it's too late for me. Yeah, she can't escape with with, uh, with BB. BB's like, come with me. It's too late for me. You are in the elevator. You are not, we have not seen you in she, any way controlled by this? She or meant anything. literally too late. It was, you know, it was, not, too it was late. 9 p.m. And she just, you know, she's getting older. She doesn't <laughs> like to leave her BB apartment to when she's like, already there. No, fuck that. And press the door close button. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nah, shut up. <laughs> door close. <laughs> and the, <clears throat> what I loved about this scene is the major domo character, uh, who I think if you looked up in a dictionary, an image of a major domo, I think this guy just totally fits the bill. He is wearing a the oh, yeah. ti- sparkles tiny, all over his face, just the, bikini briefs. That kind the of thing. tiniest bikini briefs and a robe that Let's looks. Let's talk about this robe. It looks it looks pretty impressive from the front, <laughs> and then he spins around, and on the back there's a large image, and it says "Amazing Stories" across yes! the back. <laughs> it is the best. <laughs> this guy is, and and what's great? Like, about was this? he part of the crew on Amazing Stories? <laughs> what's was that their crew this? gift? I wish that this was challenged because there is a moment where that major drama says no let her go and bb leaves and then they don't ever get bb back <laughs> and i want to see a scene with boogaloo where he's like where's bb and he's like well i thought this would go <laughs> differently but I, told- I did say let her go and you know what in retrospect boss that's on me that's my fault I was I, I was playing hard to get. <laughs> I said, he's the guy in Star Wars who's like, I, I, I an empty pod, just let it go. Reverse psychology on her. 
<laughs> I thought she would uh, be and back. And that's, of course, what Mr. Boogaloo would say, but I want my BB back, BB back, BB back. I want my BB back. BB back ribs, What's barbecue great sauce. Is my daughter's <laughs> name is BB, and Stuart numerous times throughout this movie looked at me and said, so you named her after this movie. <laughs> and I can't refute that. I don't think I did, but I have seen this movie a lot, so maybe? Yeah, you did. Uh, you did name your daughter while in an ayahuasca trance, so you can't <laughs> confirm how you named her. Me and the woman from Romeo <laughs> plus <laughs> Julia. <laughs> yep. sitting, oh, my God. It all makes so much sense now. You're right. <laughs> so it was either going to be Alfie now, or B.B. Newworth, uh, B.B. Newworth is going to be listening to this episode and be like, not after me? And it's going to just crush her. <laughs> no, nah, it's B.B. Newworth. Don't even fry. So, oh, my God. Have you seen Chicago? Whoa. Forget about it. <laughs> yeah, it's a windy city. Great. So the <laughs> BB goes oh, so, running off. So Alfie and BB both make their way to the uh, Zardoz like hippie enclave that they uh-huh. all live in a cave. And it's fine because, as their leader says, these people don't like television. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I want to talk about my favorite thing in this movie Child of Love. Child of Love is incredible. <laughs> but one, uh, Alfie grows the fakest, biggest beard. But then. They have a child. Their child. Listen, uh, Elliot, you and I are both fathers. How old is that oh, sure, child? Yeah. So, yeah, as Travis the is saying, there is yes. a. Well, no, a, I mean, what does the baby look like? Like, yeah, so the actor and have a child, child in the final scene of the movie. How old is that child? Oh, at least 32. Okay. <laughs> so this is this another one of those. He's like three years old. All right. No, yeah, they, there's their newborn baby looks like a is a is past toddler age. Like they should they're, be looking. Their at newborn baby is walking and talking. Guys, and, is this a backdoor pilot for Travis and Elliot? Guess the age of babies. <laughs> yeah, guess that. I don't think baby. it's going that well. And so this baby, full head of hair, uh, three feet tall, mm-hmm. uh, and then <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, hey ma, ma, can I get some milk? And then John Bombadil says to the cops. <laughs> Why, baby's been with us for a year. A year? That's nine months of baby gestation. That baby is maybe three months old in your timeline, John Bombadil. I mean, it's, I mean, the, 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 follow Here's, the breadcrumbs, Travis. That baby is obviously Dandy's baby. Well, that's what I'm saying. Wouldn't it be yes, so much better? Exactly. Oh, wait. But even then, maybe a year. Yeah, even maybe the timeline doesn't match up. At most, it's, it's, it's a lot a like how old. in a, it's like how in a Superman Returns, Lois Lane's boyfriend thinks that her child is his when it's clearly Superman's, and the whole time I was like, "Did you two have sex with her on the same night? Like, how could he think this?" <laughs> they did. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember that movie that much. But I do remember when they reveal that the kid has magic powers, and I'm like, yeah, no shit, movie. Well, the kid has magic powers, <laughs> but also asthma. Oh, right. If I remember correctly, so I assume, because I've been watching a lot of Smallville, that asthma inhaler has kryptonite rocks, and it meteor rocks, <laughs> as they say, and he developed it from that, oh. or it's been somehow. He gets his asthma also, from Tom the Earth's Welling yellow sun. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys not want to talk about Smallville? Because I will. <laughs> who is who is the bald fellow on that show? On Smallville? Yeah. Well, that was Michael Rosenbaum. No. Who's the character? Lex Luthor. Montel Williams. <laughs> no, right. It's Alexander Lex Luthor. Alexander Luthor. So, but wait. That's strange because in the comics, Lex Luthor is a man. He's like an old man. But imagine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you know how Superman wasn't always Superman, but at one point was a super boy? Is that true? It is true. <laughs> well, not according thinking. to current continuity. Okay. Hey, Elliot, could you stay out of this? The comic book nerds are talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now imagine Superboy, right? Okay. Yeah, I can imagine it. Now imagine Lex Boy. <laughs> Lex a character Lex I have Boy. created. Lex <laughs> Boy, is, come home. It is a whole new IP. <laughs> and it's young Lex Luthor, and he's sexy. So sexy. Oh, and he's got a great voice. And yeah, he's bald, but Just he call him is Sex fucking <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> Elliot, I am talking about comics. You stick to sports, sir. <laughs> this is my time. Yeah, you meathead. You're right. I got to stay in my lane. Got to stay okay. in my lane. Okay, so 
Okay. Lex so, is so sexy. Lex, sex okay. boy. And he's a young vampire. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. He's a child of the night. Him. <laughs> Elliot! <laughs> Elliot, please! So, Lex is a young vampire, and Superman is a young vampire, and they kiss a lot. <laughs> okay. I think I've read this fanfic. Uh-huh. And isn't also, that, isn't that Elliot! Riverdale? Elliot, please! <laughs> <laughs> and also Green Lantern's there And he's okay. sexy and a vampire mm-hmm. <laughs> And they're kissing and, and then they're in space Can can Sephiroth from Final Fantasy 7 show yeah, up? Yeah he can and Sonic's there too <laughs> Oh wow But they're mortal enemies Travis How would that I shake know, out? They fight so hard they kiss <laughs> <laughs> That happens when they're both going after those rings Yes but then they're going after each other's rings <laughs> Okay Okay Elliot what were you saying about football? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think maybe uh, since we have, I think, a minute left in the movie, let's just finish that up. Okay. Uh, so they're in the park. It's been a year later. They have a three year old baby. And <laughs> Boogaloo shows up with the cops. He says, We're going to sue you for breach of contract. Because I guess there was a clause in the contract that says she couldn't go run off and live in a cave with a bunch of stone caveman hippies. Uh, but then, uh oh, Mr. Tops is coming. Now, Mr. Tops, you may think, is a cartoon rabbit. That's what I thought at first, the first time I saw this. But no, Mr. Tops is a kind of uh, Elton John-looking god character who flies and, in in a magic limousine. And what's and amazing about this, is just to give, a, give, it, to give credit where credit is due to how ridiculous this movie is, There, this is one of those many moments where you think, I must have missed something because Alfie out yeah, of... Yeah, there the, must have been a reference. Right, but there is not. Alfie out of nowhere says, he is going to come... Mr. Tops. And I will say, in one of the few cogent mo- moments of this movie, <laughs> BB says, Who's Mr. Tops? <laughs> and we, the audience, are left wondering, Yes, I also agree with mm-hmm. that question. And he says, Don't worry, Mr. Tops is coming in what must have been 45 minutes of cut footage. Yeah. yeah, and then a one hundred percent realistic car comes flying into this into the through the sky, and a man exits that vehicle mid air and walks down to the ground. The whole thing <laughs> looks amazing. I, yeah. I I should say right now, oh, seamless. And this is very late spoiler alert, but watch this movie <laughs> because <laughs> what we are describing now to you are like, oh, they've skipped so much. No, no, no. No, my friends, join us on this metaphysical journey. Yeah, this is this is the moment where I'm like, this is weird, because if Neil Breen had made this movie, he would be this character, but he would have also been all the other characters. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is the Prince of uh, so, Egypt moment um, in which he is both Moses and also God. So Mr. Tops, he's, he comes by, and he it's kind of like if God was... A, a middle-aged porn producer on his way to the adult <laughs> video awards. <laughs> like he's just wearing like a gold tuxedo and he has this kind of puffy, uh, like middle-aged Albert Finney look. And I will say, the actor playing Mr. Tops, I think does a great job in his few moments of time <laughs> as 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 God. He brings and, a certain uh, gravity the, to the role. To do because he, he's essentially doing the same thing that Ralph Richardson does at the end of Time Bandits. And he's kind of almost as good, I'll say. Hot take. Well, that's the thing. It's here. I will say, if there had been mm, three references to Mister Tops before this moment, yeah. <laughs> if there had been any <clears throat> passing reference, mm-hmm. this this actor would be like, "Oh shit, give that guy an it, like a Golden Globe and uh, a, a Golden Globus, a daytime Emmy, <laughs> <laughs> something." And uh, so and he says, uh, "So Miss, Mr. Tops comes down and he says, all you hippies, go. I'm going to start a new planet for you somewhere without Mr. Boogaloo.'" And Mr. Boogaloo says, "But the world can't exist without me." And Mr. Tops says, "Let's give it a try." Now here what's great here's what's great about that. This does not <laughs> adhere to a single goddamn religion that exists in the world. <laughs> yeah. Because there is not yeah, a religion the that's like comet, guys. Mm, 
Okay, yeah, okay, that's fair. Because, uh, listen, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but I don't think there is a single... May- yes, the well, Hale-Bop Comet, the, uh, the Heaven's Gate people, but everyone else is like, I don't think God just bops from planet to planet well, this is looking what- for a place without the devil. <laughs> this is what I turned to Travis at the end of the movie, and I'm like, so, wait, and Travis could anticipate my objection, <laughs> which was, okay, this is God, like... Why can't he just get rid of Mr. Boogaloo on uh-huh. Earth rather than just being like, peace out, we're going to a different planet? That's not God's way, Dan. <laughs> Dan. No, that's Dan. Pick it, pick Tell it. me about God, Dan. I guess I guess God does uh, allow uh, for free will. God so. works in mysterious ways, Dan. Yeah. Hey, guys. What if God Dan, was one of us? Name one time God. <laughs> what, you mean like just a stranger on the bus? Mm-hmm. Where's he going? <laughs> no answer I like to the question. How you reacted as though you had a delay with Dan and not just Elliot. Like Dan asked you a direct question, Stuart, and you just didn't respond. I'm like, him. wait, I have something really exciting on my phone going on. Oh, an update. Hmm, might as well get on this. Wait, was it is it is it a, wait, is it a software update or is it like an update from like the New York Times or something? A software update. Okay. Wait, you can get updates from the New York Times? Yeah. Directly. You what do they push, say? Push notifications. They say, Hi Dan, just check no, no, it out. Dan. How's your day? Dan, when the New York Times says stop writing to us, we're not interested. That's not an update. <laughs> okay. Hey, don't well, be mean to Dan. This, but anyway, <laughs> In this sorry, scenario, sorry, what am I saying? Don't this, be me to Dan. In this scenario, what am I sending the New York Times that they're Shut not up, understand? Dan. Oh, God. This is between me and Elliot, I'm gonna Dan. Like, I'm going to guess poems. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're beautiful, beautiful poems, Dan. And they're like, sorry, sir, but the title Dan in Real Life has already been taken by a movie Your about poems pancakes. Are too beautiful, sir. <laughs> uh. Uh, so, and that's the end of the apple. Everyone that's the goes end of the off. Apple. The good people all go off into the uh, into into the another planet, limousine heaven, and Mister Boogaloo is left <laughs> to enjoy running the world of disco and amazing dancing. Listen, I don't I don't think we're doing it justice. How much the end of this movie is literally like the joke end of a movie for someone in a movie who can't figure out how to end their movie. This is literally like, and then God shows up yep. and they all get in a car and float off into space. Yeah. It is the most, <laughs> it is the most like joke, but serious ending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. Um, we were saying, you know, it's a literal deus ex machina. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Stephen King's like, mm, thumbs up to this ending. <laughs> Wraps it, it up with a bow. The, a god in a machine, and the machine is a Lincoln Continental. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, God, we've gone long. There's something great about that shot of the ghost hippies walking Tom's through the sky, on. and I'm like, <laughs> like, I think the filmmakers assume this is supposed to like capture everybody's imagination, but it just looks really bad. <laughs> Well, it's like they no, called, it lo- it, in 1979, they called a young M. Night Shyamalan and said, <laughs> what's a twist we might put in this movie? And he yep. said, get this. Yep. Hey, Gov. Hey, he was M. a young N- British boy. M. Night, you know that movie ending you've been looking for? Well, listen to this. Oi, maybe make me the doors of God. Hey, <laughs> Gov. I like this character. Now, here's... I- I'm drunk. Here's what the ending. What I, what I like about this ending is, the movie ends on the image of a crowd of people shuffling off to nowhere, looking pretty depressed, much like the audience of the Apple. I assume walked out of the original screening, just like, oh, it was like the filmmakers were like, let me give you a little taste of your future. You're gonna after, walk out in a row, and you're gonna be real unhappy about it. That audience, after hurling copies of the complimentary the Apple soundtrack they were given. <laughs> Hurling enough of them that it apparently damaged the screen. That is true. <laughs> that is real. There yeah. are so many wonderful facts about it. This movie was a tax shelter. Um, it got booed at its first screening. As Stuart said, they they damaged the screen. Dan, uh, before we do final judgments, I want to list some of the uh, taglines for this movie that you right, might sure, see on a quick, poster or something. Go through those. A funky fantasy that'll rock your world. 
Nice. It's 1994. The future yep. is music and music is their future. What? This one's confusing. Eat it. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, because it's an album. Yeah, the okay. Apple. Not just not just big fans of Weird Al. This one's weird. <laughs> not just <laughs> the go fuck yourselves. Hey, fuck off. <laughs> this this one will get you in the theater. The power of rock in 1994. That is actually still on the DVD, which I will present to both yeah. of you at the end of this evening. <laughs> oh wow. Thanks. Uh the power What's of amazing rock, about the that magic tagline of space. Is- the the power of rock in 1994 is a pretty great tagline because you're like, yeah, Nirvana. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Well, what I love about this movie is uh, Stuart. Well, I love many things about this movie, but Stuart texted me a couple of days ago to say, hey, have you checked your copy? <laughs> because Elliot's copy that you sent him does not work. <laughs> <laughs> no. Which is very telling to me. Like of the movie in general. <laughs> Elliot's DVD player is like. No, I'm looking out for you <laughs> on this one, off. buddy. <laughs> um, I put it in the DVD player multiple times, and each time it said, no disc. And I'm like, come on, DVD the, player. The DVD player's like, cannot violate the ro- cannot violate the laws of robotics. <laughs> I wish that there was a button that <laughs> just allow said you yes. to come to harm. <laughs> I wish there was just a button that said, yes, disc. So I was like, no disc. Mm, yes, disc. <laughs> um, so we should do final judgments. The best! Uh, is this a good, bad movie, a bad, bad movie, or a movie you kind of like? Uh, it was spookily good, bad. Did I do that right? Yeah, you, that was perfect. <laughs> wow, okay. Travis is uh, right out of the you gate. Did. I will say, I'll agree with Travis, this is a good, bad movie. It's kind of the, like, it's it's the perfect movie to watch with a bunch of people and make jokes. Yeah, I agree. It's a good, bad movie. Uh, you'll be transfixed by, there's always something weird going on. And... <laughs> I love. <laughs> okay, what? here's why that tickled me so sure. much. You could have just said, "I agree, it's a good bad movie," but then you spun into this like Siskel and Ebert esque review, like, "There's always something. <laughs> there's always something weird going on." That's the fucking pull quote. Put it on the DVD, mm-hmm. Elliot. And yeah, I uh, I'd say also a good bad movie. If it's it's a movie that uh, still manages to entertain despite as as I say being like. It has a message that I don't agree with because, to be honest, I think I'd much rather stay on Boogaloo's world uh, than go up into limousine heaven with uh, with Mr. Tops. But it's a good bad movie to watch. Like I said, it has a bunch of songs where the where the lyrics are nonsensical, and then one super sexy song that's not very good, and then one song that's genuinely a, a meatloaf level rocker. I, I actually have now been convinced this is a shitty movie. <laughs> um, it has many problematic moments that I do not adhere to. No one should watch this movie. <laughs> um, thank you, Elliot, for wow. ruining a movie that I used to enjoy, <laughs> but now I realize it's bad. Um, wow, this, this is, is the first yeah, full-on no. flip-flop on the flop house. I thought this was a good movie, a good, bad movie, but now I realize it is bad. Um, thank you so much, Elliot, for ruining a brief moment of joy that I found in this uh, dark world. But now I find is bad. Um, and I never now, in retrospect, enjoyed a moment of my life. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. Travis calls Elliot out for virtue signaling. Uh, Dan, what's the next Dan. part of this podcast? <laughs> Yeah, Mark. Hey, buddy. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Um, so I'm at this mafia restaurant. What? I'm going to go in and ask these guys what they think the best pasta shape is. Mark, they're probably eating. I it's... have a hunch that it's probably ravioli, but I mean, you know what? That's a good idea. Whatever they're eating, I'll just take a look in their bowls Why don't and you... see what they have. Maybe... There's supposed to be a big meeting there today. Can you see it from the street? That sounds really dangerous. So I'm just going to go inside and ask. Don't don't bother them. They're probably eating, you know. Well, look, I'm not threatened by them. How about we tell them what the best pasta is on our podcast? We got this with Mark and Hal. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank God. Tuesday at nine on maximumfun.org. Hey, I love that show.
Following the news is hard and it sucks. How do you know which stories are important? Which sources do you trust in this post-truth world of reactionary journalism? I'm Brett Black. And I'm Travis McElroy. And we host a podcast called Trends Like These. We cover trending news stories. We debunk misleading clickbait headlines. And we always try to throw in a little bit of good news. In our quest for truth. So join us every week on MaximumFun.org or wherever podcasts are found. Uh, now uh, we uh, thank our sponsors. What do we do now, Dan? <laughs> well, Dan. we talk about our sponsors. Oh, Dan. great. Um, <laughs> and one of them is Blue Apron. Oh, oh Blue Apron. I love Blue Apron. <laughs> well, well, you want to hear me talk about Blue Apron, Dan? Sure. sure. Why don't you uh, talk about them a hey, little bit? Do you guys like food? Yep. Sure. Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, you got me. Okay. I'm honest. <laughs> okay. You know how you I like can only food? be me, baby. You know how you like food, but you don't know where it comes from? Yep. Uh-huh. Right? And you just, like, wake up and food's there? Mm-hmm. Comes yeah. Comes from Blue Apron. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. It's the only place to get food, you guys. In this cool. post-apocalyptic world <laughs> yep. that we live in, yep. Blue Apron is the only option left to us. Yep. You got to put a Blue Apron mark on your forehead. That's true. And you wear mm-hmm. that Blue yep. Apron mark, uh, that Blam mark. Yep. And it comes, and the food comes, and you don't question it. Well, okay. do not que- Dan, <laughs> okay. don't question it. It's pre-portioned ingredients with uh-huh. all the instructions right there. Um, it is, listen, good food. You uh-huh. don't have sure. to know how to cook. It yep. just comes to you, and you don't question it. And you make <laughs> the food, and you don't question it. Uh, but what do you have to do, Dan? Well, I also want to mention. Instead of questioning. Dan. I also want to just mention that for eight weeks, uh, and that's ending on February the 26th, Blue Apron is teaming with Whole30 to bring you delicious recipes. Uh, the menu oh, will feature cool. two Whole30 approved recipes each week, like chicken and kale orange salad with spicy tahini dressing. Sounds delicious. Kickstart <laughs> your new year with Blue Apron and Whole30, and uh, Flop House listeners can get $20 off their first order by visiting Blue Apron. Blueapron.com mm-hmm. yep. slash flop house. Mm-hmm. Say it again, Dan. <laughs> so check out this week's menu. Uh-huh. And get your thirty dollars off yep. uh-huh. with free shipping uh-huh. at blueapron.com slash flop house. Blue apron, a better way to cook. I think the first time I said twenty dollars off, it is thirty dollars off. You know Whoa. what I like about that, Dan? Can I tell you? What? When you said tahini, it reminded me of tahani, uh-huh. like from Good Place. Yeah. It's Uh-oh. not a fun joke. It's just, I'm just saying. No, it just reminded you of a thing that it gave just you reminded me of how much I like the good place. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. You know what and I like? I just like the book that, Dan, the good is, earth. I like. Anyways, uh huh. Dan, I like that you misread a number that was right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's damn in this room. Uh, let's now see. no, yeah, and twos look a lot like threes. I get it. It's okay. There's a curve. Uh, we've got another sponsor, <laughs> and it's called ZipRecruiter. Oh, I love ZipRecruiter. Can yeah. I tell you about ZipRecruiter? Sure. sure. In this post-apocalyptic world, mm-hmm. when you need people to guard your gates from, mm-hmm. you know, wasteland zombies. Yep. And, yeah. But you don't know how to hire those people. No. Okay. Right? No. So you go to ZipRecruiter, and you put in, like, neandzombiesnipers.com. Uh-huh. And Zip Recruiter is going to provide those for you. No questions asked. Don't know why you put those. That's my favorite thing about okay. Zip Recruiter. No questions <laughs> yeah. asked. Yeah. Damn, go on. Well, uh, Zip Recruiter does all this by posting your job to over 100 job boards with just one click. No yeah. questions asked. <laughs> they actively look for the most qualified candidates and invite them to apply. No mm. questions asked. No wonder 80% of employers who post on Zip Recruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. One question asked. Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now... Our listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. Mm-hmm. That's right. The cost is free. Yep. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Flophouse. That's ZipRecruiter.com. And how much does that cost? Slash Flophouse. It's free. That's $0. Zero Flophouse or free? Zero cents. Well, you had asked. interrupted me right in the middle of my ad read. <clears throat> is, I it, just, wait, so. <laughs> so ask my a question, question is, that has been answered it, twice. <laughs> how many then, questions asked, Dan? Twice? 
Okay. Is it okay. slash flop house or slash frop house? Because you said both. <laughs> Actually, Actually both, that's both a, will take you there. Dan, really I was watching him right now. He just bought the URL. <laughs> yeah. So I think the next part of this podcast is Jumbo Jumbotron. Okay, and we got a Jumbotron. It is Jumbotron. <laughs> Thank you, Sorry, Trump. I had a delay. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird that you're the one who has lag. Yeah. Talking to Elliot over Skype. Well, I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Okay, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. When are we going to do the Jumbotron? <laughs> oh, boy. Is that coming up? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's coming up. Because there's uh, a lag on this end. Okay. Uh, oh, do you have lag? Mm-hmm. Cage Match Cast is a podcast for people who wish Cage Miss was year-round. Each week, a new movie steps into our audio steel cage to... Face slash off against a Nicolas Cage movie. Cage Match Cast, a Nick Cage podcast for your ears and your mind. So why don't you guys go subscribe to Cage Match Cast on iTunes today? Sounds like a good choice. I love me some Nicolas Cage. Elliot, I believe you also have a message. I do. I have a personal message. This mm-hmm. is a personal message. Dan, if you could please be quiet because this is kind of personal mm-hmm. and I, I need a moment. <laughs> Dan. Dan. So Dan, if you could Dan, if you could not butt in, this is pretty personal. Uh, this message is for Okay, Tacoma. I won't butt in. And Oh boy. <laughs> uh, this message is for Tacoma and the message is from some husband. And the message goes like this. This isn't revenge for the time you paid the Mackle boys $100 to shame me about finding out what all of my Xmas presents were a few years ago. It's to shame you for not liking the new Mario, you monster. And also, happy B-Day, happy V-Day, that's the V as in Valentine's, and happy haberdashery. Oh, okay. That's from I'm Tacoma so, to some husband. I'm so glad I can be here. Tacoma, we're even. <laughs> Tacoma, no questions asked. <laughs> we're even. I'm coming for you. <laughs> wow, the wow. weird thing is Travis is making eye contact with Dan the whole time when he said that. <laughs> Tacoma, I'm going to kill Dan <laughs> because of the thing you did. <laughs> Dan's uh, dead. Seems, seems fair. I guess yeah, that's I mean, the that's way way of the wasteland. You, Dan. I've had a good run. So. You haven't. <laughs> I'm sorry, Have you, Dan? Dan? Have you really? I don't know. Let's ask Dan's well, two friends both named Emmy. When like... we come back next week, has Dan <laughs> had a good run? Yeah, I mean, I'd say up until like, you know, two or three years ago, I had a pretty good run. <laughs> Actually, I would say when you were 12, you were doing great. Yeah. yeah. And then it all went downhill. <laughs> oh, boy. Back when you were 12 and everyone was like, that kid's got knees for days. <laughs> <laughs> that kid's knees are gonna take him forever. So what's the hey, next? You know part those of this? knees you were looking for? Well, listen to this. <laughs> Look at I this. I can't. Kid's I can't knees. hear anything. Uh, so what's the My next part of this? The bees what do we? What do we do now, Danny? Uh, now we've got some letters from listeners. Listeners like you. Mm-hmm. Um, the first. <laughs> well, not you, Stuart. Letters. <laughs> Well, we Stuart's got, not a listener. Oh. Stuart's a host. I was going to do a song, but... Yeah. Yeah, what's what's stopping you? Elliot just bulldozes over yeah, us. Yeah, not now. I was going to do a whole Oh, thing. now you're embarrassed. <laughs> that went like... Oh, letters. No, no, go for it. Oh, go for it. Fuck! <laughs> I was coming back in. Uh, it was going to be great. It was going to be like into the woods kind of thing. <laughs> With like a whole motif about how letters are scary, but the way is clear, but letters. Yeah. That's weird because I got a message. Uh, yeah, from I'm your, not done. I have a message from your brothers. They say you would totally chicken out of doing a song if you met the letters. least amount of resistance. We've got letters. <laughs> God damn it, Elliot. <laughs> No, oh. how about Elliot? You just do it if you're such a big man. Oh, if you're so brave. Well, Dan, stay out of this. Okay. <laughs> Dan, this is between me and Elliot. Prove look, yourself. Look, Travis, hey, we could fight about this. And yeah, I'd win that fight. But I think I want to show you that you've got the strength and you've got the confidence. You've got the ability inside you. So I'm going to give you a second chance at life, love, and song about letters. Well, should we sing a letter song together with 30 second lag? I would love to, except occasionally the Skype call has been blipping out. 
but we can try our best. Okay, on let's call three. this duet. Let's call let's call this duet uh, Skype lag for letters. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Letters. We've got letters. letters. It's time letters. for letters, and we're so excited to bring letters to you, the listener, and you. And you. And us. And us. And, and you. It's a, and it's the letters. And it's time for Dan to read the letters. Today. Dan, take it away. Guys, I just I just got a message. The audience's heartbeat reached over 150. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Boogaloo. <laughs> All right. This letter. Hey, is... hey, hey. <laughs> letters on the way. Oh, God. <laughs> This letter is from Sarah, last name withheld, who writes, My husband is a huge fan of your show and has been following you for years and years and years. He's turned several of his friends into fans, one of whom was once referenced on your show bumping into Elliot's on a Popeye's run. It, uh, uh, yeah. We, we both love and he your... turned another of his friends into a jack-in-the-box and then wished him to the cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> You're bo- we both love your humor, wit, and whimsy. My husband's 35th birthday is on February 26th. Gross. And I'd love to make him a Flophouse-themed birthday party. <laughs> okay. I'm not quite sure what that would entail, but I was wondering if you had any suggestions or merchandise available that I could purchase to make it seem more official. Much love, Sarah Last Name mm-hmm. Withheld. Well, we do have merchandise, but I don't if feel we like smarter, we If we were smarter, we would have merchandise. Well, I didn't hear my name in that at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but this is where, Travis, you can suggest Flophouse-related birthday no. type stuff. Okay, here's what you do. Have uh-huh. some Popeyes. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. that's Elliot. Mm-hmm. Grab yeah. a bit of beer, and that's Stuart. Uh-huh. And maybe you feel bad about those, and that's Dan. Yeah, regret those choices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's yeah. a whole themed Well, thing. correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. This letter was written by a wife. Yes. Uh, that wife probably has a butt, and that's the oh. Dan part of the party. <laughs> hey, there we are. Do you have, well, let's not assume they have a butt. Yeah, many millions of Americans each year are tragically born without butts. <laughs> Come with me, Molly, won't you? <laughs> really, millions? <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't have butts. <laughs> I'm I'm very passionate about this charity, Elliot, because it, it really speaks to me. I I I suffer as much as the. It victim. really sneaks up behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, now I like to believe Dan that you're like a you're like one of those celebrities who suddenly becomes a conspiracy theorist. Like you're like, are people losing their butts because of these chemtrails? <laughs> oh my god, Elliot! What, what you don't see, Dan just stood up and pulled a prosthetic butt out of his pants. <laughs> the weird he thing has was, been without a butt this whole time. That's why he's been so focused on butts. That's why I'm so covetous of other butts. Now he's pulling a second prosthetic. But out of the front of his Wait, pants? and a third <laughs> from the side? <laughs> and a fourth from his back? Dan! He said it's to protect him against Travis attacks? Too late. <laughs> Ow. That Should have my... kept that butt. Yeah. I told you not to lose that butt. I kind of wish all that, that bit had gone to the point where Dan takes off his overcoat and it's just two children, one standing on the shoulders of the other. <laughs> This is avarice, and this is butts. Yeah, so I guess that answers your question, Sarah. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks, your husband. Thank your husband for listening. I don't know. Just just put some crepe paper up, and you know, put put Neil Breen's face on it or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Nicholas Cage. Put on Nicholas Cage movie. Pop some corn. You know. Leave your brain at the door. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, just take something bad and then turn it around and make it something good, and that's the Flophouse way. Uh, this letter is from Patrick, last name withheld, who writes, One of my favorite comedic... Magoon? Patrick McGowan from The Prisoner? Yeah. One of my favorite comedic scenes used to be the classic bit from Bruce Almighty, where the now omnipotent Jim Carrey messes around with a smug newsman, Steve Carell, by forcing him to pass gas, speak in a high-pitched voice, scream gibberish, etc. Eleven-year-old me found this riotous. However, recently watching that clip on YouTube only conjured up feelings of disgust towards that film and myself. It's not funny that Jim Carrey is using Steve Carell as a flesh puppet. That's some... Badass rogue Shogun Stu Wellington voice. Fucked up shit, broheem. 
Mm-hmm. That's pretty close. My question. What's a, <laughs> my question? What's a scene from a film that you loved slash found hilarious as a child, but as an adult now find crude, insufferable, or depressing that you even liked it in the first place? I can I answer? Yeah, <clears throat> I will say along those same lines. Basically, anything from Ace Ventura. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. He's like, I I feel like I I was right in the the wheelhouse of like uh thinking Jim Carrey was very very funny. For like the mask, Ace Ventura, that I was like, this is gold. That now when I think about Yeah, like when he says, somebody stop me, you're like, no, no one right, stop no, him. No, don't stop him. This is great. Um, <laughs> but now. You are smoking, sir. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, P R A T Y. Because mm-hmm. I love it. Um, but no, they're so. Oh, uh, it's just. It's heinous, not only in like, it's not funny. But also in that like '90s way of like, ah, oh, so much of this is homophobic, transphobic, yeah. blah blah, fat phobic, all of these things that like I it it makes me sad for like ten year old Travis that laughed at that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like mine is sort of similar along the line. I mean, I would say about half of Animal House hasn't aged well, uh, and Ugh. all of <laughs> all of it, all of it hasn't aged well. And, uh, you know, I found That's it because very... Elliot's not a party dude. That's how I like why Elliot feels that way. I found it funny as a kid. No, although... I like, I like, I like the elitists. <laughs> although, um, when, when they're trying to shut down Animal House, you're like, yeah, yeah, shut down Animal House. Put them on triple secret probation. Who cares? Well, I mean, yeah, I think like, they, they are like, doing wait, the, bad shit. The, the, I will yeah, the fraternity that's breaking the rules and hurting people and misleading women to make them sleep with them. Yeah, shut that house down. Shut yeah. that shit down. And while you're at it, shut down uh, that PCU, PCU house. Yeah. And how about those nerds? <laughs>